I'm gonna talk about four core topics today. Number one, how to build products when you are a student in college and how to get people to actually use them. Number two, how to hire people internationally and get them to align in one culture to be extremely productive and also have a lot of fun along the way. Number three is how to set big, hairy, audacious goals and dream big dreams. And then how to set clear objectives on how to accomplish those things. I promise I'll do it before. So before I start, I'm gonna raise the energy in the room, do a little backflip. I'm glad you all are here. I have two underlying macro goals I wanna make sure I cover today. And the number one is to give you the confidence to believe that anything you want to build, you can. And anything you want to learn, you can. And nothing is standing in your way of doing that. You are, in my opinion, the luckiest group of people to ever go to college because the world has never been as flat as it is today. It is now a complete norm that 20 year olds build billion dollar companies. Like no one will ever claim that you can't build a billion dollar company as a 20 year old. Quick show of hands, who listens to podcasts or audiobooks here? Literally everybody has their hand up. Um, I've been doing this talk for the last four years. The first time about a third of the room had their hands up. So I'm gonna in a second explain how to identify macro trends as a student, both from the supply side of software and from the demand side of how people behave. Um, that'll help you guys think through building companies if that is something that you want to. Um, I listened to a book called The Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss when I was 17 before I got to learn. Because I read this book by Tim Ferriss, um, I wrote down all my goals. So I'm one of five kids, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. I wanna have between five and seven kids. If you're gonna go to a place like Brown, you gotta make a lot of money. And I did the math for everything. And I was like, cool, I need $500,000 a year. All right, so that means that if I like make like the worst return I could possibly make, 5% per year, I need $10 million in a bank account and then I can passively live the rest of my life. Um, and Ferris has this concept called a news company, a company that you build. It doesn't take that much time to run. It'll make you, let's say like $300,000 a year. So cool. My goal is to make $10 million by the time I graduate from Brown. Guess what? It didn't happen. But I had built about 36 products by the time I had graduated. Um, and the way that I focus in classes is in the first couple of weeks of the semester, I worked really hard on school. And the second that I got the hang of it, it would switch. And I would start doing, all my focus became things I was building. And then a midterm would come and it would switch. And then I would finish the midterm and it would switch again. And finals would come and it would switch again. And then on breaks, I just like went ham. One of the things that I realized was that above everything else, I want to be the person that I needed most when I was young. And when I was young, the thing I really, really needed was someone to read my books to me because I couldn't do it myself. And I realized that text-to-speech has been around since like the 1960s and no one has fixed it and nobody uses it. So if I don't do it, just nobody else would. So I decided that I was going to do that. Um, and I make it sound like it was like a eureka decision. It was not. It also happened to be a product that I built that kicked up a lot of momentum. Um, what I ended up doing when I wanted to work on this is I also justified that I could build a 10x, 100x product that was better than what currently existed. And the thing that made me believe this is within artificial intelligence, there's a subcategory called deep learning. There's a famous quote by Jeff Bezos when he was working at Google Shaw and he read the stat that the internet was growing at 2,300% per year. And every single day he was sitting at Google Shaw, his like butt was on fire. He was like, I have to get out of here. I have to go participate in the internet. So he quit and he went to focus on the internet. And I felt the same way. You know, people talk about, you know, computers are gonna take over the world, like far away from that being the case, but narrow applications of deep learning, yeah, that's really impactful and it's happening now. And so there were five, six categories that I thought were extremely impactful, pretty impactful. Speech synthesis, optical character recognition, transcription, translation, natural language processing, and recommendation engines. So I started building all this stuff into this little app that I built, and it started getting better and better and better. And so I started flying around the country, teaching kids how to use Speechify. And every place I'd go to, kids would cry because number one, it was the first time they found someone who was like a semi-adult who was actively owning the fact that they were dyslexic and had ADD. And it looked like I kind of knew what I wanted to do. But number two, it actually solved the problem. If you are hard of sight, you use glasses. If you are, you know, mobility challenged, you use a wheelchair. If you have ADD, you can even use Adderall or Vyvanse or Ritalin. Um, although I'm not a huge fan, but sometimes it makes sense. If you have dyslexia, you're just screwed. Like you just need to spend hundreds, thousands of hours learning stuff like Linda Mubel. Um, and even that, you're challenged to get to the same level of normal people. But you can just download an app for your computer or your phone and it'll just read out everything to you. Today, 120 people work on Speechify. Um, we're based in 24 different countries. We've been remote first for the last five and a half years. The leadership team for Speechify, it's eight of us all live in the same house. We've realized that, you know, not all smart people happen to live in the Bay Area in California. I consistently would just find awesome people um, throughout the world that, you know, just haven't gotten to work with a team like Speechify and just 
invite them into the experience. And if they create value, there's nothing I will not do. And I will literally move mountains to make sure that we can keep working together. All right, so that's how to build an international team. Um, you find awesome people and you just give as much love as you can. Quick summary and then I'm just gonna open it up to question. Number one, be bold, don't suffer. Um, number two, figure out how to handle your fear uh, and figure out how to streamline your dreams. And just do this by sitting down and writing. What's the worst thing that could happen? And what's the best thing that can happen? Um, you know, choose when to go ham. Um, and there's always a way to circumnavigate an obstacle in a human rights system by just thinking through it and finding a person at the top of the governance structure. The one piece of advice that I would give someone uh, who's like 18 years old is like the highest leverage thing that you could do, listen to as many audiobooks as possible. I don't care if you use Speechify or if you use Audible or if you read them in person. You can see books. And number two is count macronutrients, but that's another topic. All right, I'm gonna open it up to question. Thank you guys for listening. I was actually not heavily involved in any club. Um, you know, I played a little bit of intramural soccer. Um, I was one of the people who used the makerspace the most to 3D print a skateboard break I was building in sophomore freshman year. Um, but I was not like a president of any club or anything like that. Purely because I didn't have the time, I preferred to build um, over like actively participating in these things. But I attended all the events. So I'd always be sitting where you guys are sitting. Um, I would like legitimately be on the bus for 10 hours in order to go attend a hackathon. Um, so I did a lot of hackathons. And the reason I did this, to be honest with you, is I have ADHD. It's very difficult for me to sit down and code on my own. But if I'm in a gym and I'm eating food and everybody else is coding and like it's a competition, like it's a lot easier to focus. Um, and so I did that and I did pitch competitions and that really helped me over time. Um, I have a philosophy, which is your brain should always be thinking, this sucks, how can I fix it? For example, you have a banana in your backpack. It could explode and that would be the worst thing ever. So you came up with an innovative solution. The banana is outside of the backpack. But I was not as smart as you. I would typically put the banana inside the backpack. So you can come up with like a banana hole, right? Just because it sucks, how do I fix it? You know, I get off the train station and I'm like, damn, it's cold. And I like, watch the back. And you know, how can I like redesign the jacket to be better? Can I make like heated gloves or like a bubble that like goes over my head and like heats me up? And like, I'll just like spend time musing about these ideas and write about them. And every week I'll come up with like a hundred of these and 99 will be not good, but one will be maybe good. And every like couple of months, I'll get one that's really good. And so for one to be really good, it needs to be number one, an intersection of something that you are really excited about that, other, that has not been implemented yet where you can 10 to 100x improve the existing technology. Ideally, it's riding on some trend. So for me, I noticed that with podcasts and audiobooks, people were listening more. With AirPods, people were listening more. People were starting to learn how to double speed. Um, you know, double speed YouTube, Netflix, WhatsApp messages, et cetera. You could not convince me the text-to-speech was not amazing. And I started making YouTube videos about it and people would watch them and actually start to use text-to-speech. Um, and then I had the same feeling about artificial intelligence, narrow applications. Um, and then even then I made very little progress in the first two years. Like the only reason people use the product is I literally like stole the stage at conferences and forced people to use it. The only reason I don't sleep a lot, I argue, is because I eat extremely healthy. So if I have the option between eight hours of sleep and like six hours and a workout, I'll always take the workout. You actually should sleep. My philosophy is when you do not sleep, you're just stealing time from later on in your life where you're gonna die earlier. My philosophy is that as a founder, your number one goal is to learn. You learn how to code, how to talk to users, how to recruit people, how to you know, do customer acquisition. As a CEO, you have three roles. Make sure there's enough money in the bank, um, find the right people, recruit into the company and put them in the right seats. And number three is set vision. Um, so those are the main things that I've spent time on. Now, the way that I approach things is because I have a really high bias towards action and I read a lot of books, we do everything differently at Speechify compared to normal companies. We hire differently, we do product management differently. And so I'll go and head a division for a little bit I'll read all the books about it and then I'll make a list of like the hundred best people in the world about that thing and I'll get them on Zoom calls and then I'll fly to wherever they are and I'll make friends with them and I'll learn how they do the things that they do. And then I'll just rewrite the playbook completely. So at a certain point I flew around the world and I went to every person who was the CEO of a really good company that did consumer subscription and was good at Instagram and Facebook ads and I sit behind them and see how they buy ads. The hardest thing about buying ads is making content that converts and we hire people to help us and like it just didn't work. And I was like, all right, I'll just do it myself. So every day I'd make like a ton of videos. I'd walk out of the gym and be like, hi, my name is Cliff. Uh, you know, I just had a workout and I use this amazing app called Speechify that lets me X, Y, Z. And I would schedule time Saturday and Sunday for two hours and I would just shoot ads. 
And I just learned what converted well. It turns out that funny ads convert a lot better, especially on YouTube. So every once in a while, I'll write a funny ad, I'll shoot it, and if it's good, it'll perform. So um, Aristotle talks out about actually having a table of values. And his argument is that temperance is really important. So, you know, you have martial valor on one side and you have like, you know, just like recklessness on the other. And you gotta like find the mean. The wording of my values improved a lot over time. So for example, when I was 13, one of the goals was to be a billionaire. And little by little, I realized that like, I didn't care about money in my bank account. I looked up to a lot of people who had created a billion dollars worth of value because it was a very effective heuristic for figuring out the value those people created in the world. And so I changed it to, I wanna create as much value in the world. Uh, because if I create a lot of value, even if I don't capture that value, equally valuable. Um, in terms of uh, bringing it to the company, I really lead with actions. And so if you work at Speechify, like it's just like evident. I spent so much time thinking about the quality of life of the other people that I live with and work with. And like, this is what I care about. I have four younger siblings who do the same thing with them. And when you do that consistently for the people who are your direct team, they'll do that for everybody else. And if you don't do that at Speechify, you just naturally will not fit in and you'll not get more responsibility. And so if you come in and you just have a huge bias towards action and you guys do stuff, you'll just rise super quickly at Speechify. Um, and a lot of it is just a function of how well do you match the values. Have we had people who didn't match the values? Yes. And over time, they exited the company either on their own accord or it just didn't make sense to work together. This is a really hard question to answer because tenacity and the ability to not quit is the number one indicator of whether you'll be successful in a startup or not. The way that I think about it is it's like you're a Jeep going through this little savanna. And as long as you've got air in your tires, like you'll keep going. And so if you look at the statistics of like why people, you know, why startups don't work out, um, the number one answer you'll see is co-founder disagreement. Okay, I'm a solo founder, so I don't have that problem. Uh, but the real answer is not that, because even if, you know, whatever, I'll keep working on it. The real time people stop is when they stop enjoying what they're doing. And so make sure that you're enjoying what you're doing. And you can do that. Uh, there's a great quote by Steve Schwartzman. It takes as much time to build a huge company as it does to build a small one. The guy working at a dairy down the street, down there, works as much hard as I do. So you might as well build a huge business. You just gotta pick the right decision. And then, you know, you go to Bloomberg, you build like a billion dollar, whatever, but then he spends the rest of his time on philanthropy. So you might as well build a huge business that does a lot of good for the world. And that's why I got really lucky with Speechify. I am building a company that significantly impacts the lives of people with disabilities. 25% of our users have either dyslexia, ADHD, low vision, autism, concussions, anxiety, second language learners. But 75% are you know, neurotypical. Doctors, lawyers, accountants, people in the military, executives, people in finance. Um, so one, let's pick something that you love. And two, if it does not scale, it might be time to go. Uh, but it's really when you stop having fun.